Greetings, it is Max so Diddly here, and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to you give a in your coursework. And today we're here with how to make a GUI music player in Java. So this is a follow up to my how to play music in Java video, eye up in the corner if you want to watch it. But today we're going to be looking at how we can actually make a GUI version with buttons, so you can like play the music, pause it, resume and loop the music, and how to load custom music files. So let's get right into it. I'll be using the NetBeans GUI builder. So let's get right into it. Firstly, in our main class, we need to put the following code. Uh, this is going to create our music form. Make sure to get the right name or use your own name if you want to, but make sure you, you keep it consistent. Uh, we're going to then set the form we create to be visible. We're going to make it so you can't resize it and we're going to center it in the screen. So let's go make that form. Want to go to file new file, swing GUI forms, JFrame form, call it music player form or whatever you want to actually call it, click finish, and there we go. Now we have a little thing. But before we do that, we need to do one other thing. We need to make a singleton class. And while that is a perfect way to describe me, we're not actually going to be making one about me. Um, we're going to go back to new file, and we're going to make another Java class. And basically, a singleton class is a class which should only exist once in your code. So we're going to actually set that up. And we're going to call it music player. And in our music player class, we need to do a few things. We need to create two static variables. Uh, a, mus an, a static instance of this class and a static clip. You also want to fix imports to import the clip uh, JavaX uh, library. We then need to make a private music player. Uh, this is a constructor for a class. We need to add public static music player. So you make the, construct the default constructor private, but we then add another function here and we're going to call it get instance. And this is going to return the static object we created there. So now we have a way to actually access this class. And we can call this in our music player form, and then we'll have one instance of this music player. Now we have a new function. So this is called public static void load music, and we pass in a string called file path. Essentially, we're going to be finding the music file and loading it into memory. So then when we want to play, we can just play it without, without it having to load. So we do a try catch. We need a try catch for any um, file handling or music playing. It's required in Java. Uh, we do file music path equals new file path. And we should fix the imports here to fit for everything. So essentially we're creating a file object called music path and it's going to be set to wherever file path takes us to. Then we do if music path dot exists. Why? Well, we don't want to try and open a music file if the file doesn't actually exist. Then we do audio input stream. Call it audio input equals audio system dot get audio input streams and then we pass in music path. Then we do clip equals audio system dot get clip. That's converting the audio stream into a little Java clip. Then we do clip dot open. This opens it. And then we're going to print initialize as debugging stuff. And if it fails, we're going to put yes because why not? But a better thing would be something like E, print out the actual error message and not just a yes. Depends what you want. So now that we've got that sorted, now we go into music player form. And we need to actually do some design. So what we need to do, we need to make some buttons and text fields. So firstly, we're going to add in a text field. Uh, this is where we're going to allow the user to input a file path to the song they want to play. Uh, we also need a label, and this can say something like file path. Uh, we need a button. This can be called load, and we're actually going to go into the properties of the button, and we're going to change the name of this button to be like, I know, load underscore, I know, load button, just so it has a, a, a good name, makes the code easier to read. Now we need a few more buttons. So we need a play button, which would start the music from the start. So we're going to do play. 
we are going to go into the properties of the button and we're going to change it to be, I don't know, play button. We're going to have another button, which is going to be, um, which is going to say pause initially. And we're going to call it, I don't know, go to the properties. We're going to call it pause button. And we're going to make one more button, and this is going to be the loop button. And again, we're going to change the actual name of the button, and not just the text, to make the code better. We're going to call it loop, if I can spell. We're going to call it loop button. And so we've got our three buttons. we got our fourth button there. We've got the text field, and we should probably uh, do that as well. And no. File input text field i don't know something like that so we've got we don't really need to give this a name because we don't interact with it so now that we've got all the buttons let's actually get into the code so firstly we need to go click on source here to access the source code and at the very top we need to put in the following lines so what does this code up here actually do well we're going to create a bunch of statics so it's, they're going to stay there and Firstly, we've got a music player, and this is going to be equal player, so that's what we're going to call our music player, equals music player dot get instance. Essentially, we're getting our singleton class and creating a global variable for it, so anything in this class can access it. Like, the same way you put a single person puts themselves on Tinder in hope of getting dates. A lot of people have, a have access to them, and hopefully they find a date. It's a bit like that. Then we got a static string called file path. And we're going to play a little clip from the Pokemon Johto series, the anime. Great anime if you're bored and want to watch something while you're in lockdown. It's a great line, you're going to love it. And we're also going to have a long variable, which is essentially a long integer. And it's called clip time position. And we've also got two booleans for is playing and is looping. By default, uh, we are playing the... the um, music so it's going to be true and by default we do not loop so it's going to be set to false but they can be changed in the program now let's go back to the design and actually do some code so firstly let's interact with the play button actually no there's one more thing we have to do um in the um, constructor for this class so up here in public music play form player form uh after init components we want to do player dot load music and file path why do we want to do this well that's our um function here where we load up the music. Now let's go back to the design and let's make the play button work. So the play button, what are we going to do here? So we want this play button to be reset the song to the beginning. Begin, be we want this play button to reset the song to the start or the beginning. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the following lines. Player.clip. So to access the clip in this class, we have to put the name of um the object first. So we're gonna have to do player, then we do dot clip, then we do set microsecond position to zero. Essentially we're gonna set the music clip to zero. Then we do clip time position equals zero. That just resets the pause function that we're gonna have in the implement next. And then player dot clip dot start. And that's gonna start the music. Now let's make the pause button. So we can go to the pause button, double double click and we found code our little function for the pause button. So what's going on here? So our pause button will also be our resume button. Essentially we can click the button to toggle if the song is paused or not. So we want to do if is playing. That means the song is playing and therefore we want to pause it. So we set the clip time position variable to player.clip.get microseconds position. This is basically saying right get the current position like the seconds into the song that we're up to. Then we're going to stop the clip because we want to continue because we want to pause it. And then we're going to set the text to resume, implying that when you click the button again, we're going to resume where we set left off from, because most music players have the same button for pause and resume. Otherwise, if is playing clip is not true, then it's set to false. That means we are paused and want to resume. So we do player clip dot set microsecond position to clip dot time position. Essentially, let's jump to wherever we've paused to with the clip. Then we click start 
And then we set the text to pause, implying that, okay, next time we press the button, they want to actually pause their um, song, not resume it. After, we do the simple is playing is equals not is playing. Uh, simply making the boolean equal to not of the same boolean basically makes the boolean swap values all the time. Very handy piece of code. Now let's go into the loop button. Let's go to design again and click loop. So this is what we've got for the loop button. We've got if not is looping, by default looping is set to false. Then we want to basically do player.clip.loop, then clip.loop continuously. We'll also see the fix imports here and import the clip library into Java. If we're not, if we're looping is set to true, then we obviously don't want to loop. So we do player.clip.loop0, implying don't loop this song any more times when we finish. Then we do the same as before and swap the booleans around. Now we need to make the load button stuff. So go back to design and double click load. Right, so what does this line of code do? Well, firstly, we do file path equals fi file input text field dot get text. Essentially, whatever um, is in here, set that to the file path variable. By the way, make sure you've got all the variable names correct. Either copy in properly, copy in completely what I'm doing, or change the names and making sure you're putting them in the right place. And then we do player dot clip dot stop. We've just loaded a new file. We don't want to continue playing the old clip. Then we do player.clip.set microsecond position to zero. This ensures that when we play the new song, it starts at zero. Then we do clip time position equals zero. This ensures uh, that, let's say we paused, then load a new clip. If we were to click resume, even though we're playing a different song, it would jump to the microsecond position of the old song. So we just set that, set that to zero. Then we do player.loadmusic and then file path. This is the function we made here to load a new song into the clip that we currently have. So that's it. So let's see if this works. So we click play. And a little error has popped up. And I just realized um, we need to actually change the name here to music player to music player form. And that, that was a, a misnaming of the variable on my half. So let's play again. Make sure you get that naming correct. So we've got ours running. So uh, by default, we are loading in the Brock song. So let's just click play. Oh no, it's raining. Ah. Hey, I know. I'll use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan. I like to just say, that's like one of the best lines in any show. And when he gets zapped by lightning, it won't be a drying pan anymore, it'll be a dying pan. Yeah, so sorry, I don't wish death upon Brock. Great, gu great guy, one of my favourite characters in the anime. So let's, um, let's load up something. Actually, let's test the loop function first. We're going to click play. But we're going to click loop. <laughs> trusty frying pan as a drying pan. As you can see, it's looping. Oh no, it's raining. Ah. Hey, let's, I know. I'll use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan. As you can see, it stops looping. Now, we're going to try the load function here. So, in your project directory, make sure you have the songs that you wish the user to load. So we've got two things here. We have Brock's best line ever, and we've got Boris Lo-Fi. Well, a small clip of it, because the actual Lo-Fi music is like two hours long, and it's like 700 megabytes, and that's like quite big. So we're just going to rename so we can copy it. Make sure you get the right file path for this loading, by the way. I've put these in the project directory so we can just put the name plus dot wav on the end. So let's put Boris Lofi dot wav. You might be like, Max, why are you playing this? Well, it's like the best piece of political marketing to ever exist. Apart from that president who said, if you vote for the other person, you will literally have a nuke dropped on your head. This is like on the same level as that. 
Genius marketing. You can love him, hate him. Genius marketing. Great. It's actually really good to listen to as well. But let's click play. So let's click pause. So he's currently saying Parliament refuse. So he's going to then um, say something like the deal or something like that after. So let's click resume and see what happens. Finally to give approval on uh, a crust to come out on October 31st, which was a great disappointment. As you can see, it did work. And now he's probably going to say something like get Brexit done or something next. So let's click resume. We've got to get Brexit done. And then you got this sick lo-fi music. So that's basically it. And I'll just show that we can load up Brock's quote again. <laughs> As you can see, we can load up the song again. Trusty frying pan as a drying pan. I just love that quote so much. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. This has been a longer tutorial, but this is a, more, a slightly more complicated topic. This software is by no means perfect, and I strongly advise that you make some alterations to this if you are going to submit this as actual work, like add some getters and setters, use better names and make this a bit neater, but this is providing the foundations to make an mp3 player. So be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe if you want more content. If you got any suggestions, leave them in the comments, I will do them. I'm going to be uploading a lot more during this quarantine. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, uh, stay safe and have a great day.